Hello, YouTube land. This is Brent and Son coming to you from Lexington, Kentucky, the Bluegrass State. If anyone wants to share a story here on this show, you can contact me at brentandson at gmail.com. And I'd appreciate it if you would um, contact me to share your story because um, over time, you know, it's uh, I, I'd like to collect up a, some in reserve and I can maybe do more shows per week. And uh, if you want to contribute to help with the show, you can go to PayPal Me, and, and that link will be in the description, and uh, make a contribution there. Or you can go join Patreon and, uh, you know, donate five bucks a month or something, and uh, or whatever you feel that you can do. And uh, that would help create a budget where we could do lots of cool things that you all would enjoy watching. Well, today we have some more... Um, Bigfoot stuff, and uh, we have Sean on the line, and I'll let Sean kind of tell what he wants to about himself, and then he can start telling his stories. Hello, Sean. How you doing, buddy? Good. How about you? Nah, I'm doing wonderful, man, and uh, well, if you want to, you can tell a little bit about, like, where, you know, the area that you live. You don't have to tell the exact town or nothing, but state and you know, right. stuff like that so people know where you had these... Well, you had the encounters in several different places, so you can do that however you want to. Tell a little bit about yourself, and then uh, just get into your stories. All right, so I'm one of them St. Louis country boys. I don't know if you people know about them. Not a lot of them around here, but I'm one of them. <laughs> but, yeah, I've had some. These are Well, these aren't going to be crazy experiences. Like, I'm not coming face-to-face -face with a Bigfoot free and fighting them or nothing. <laughs> Like, I ain't, that ain't really what I'm about. But, so, my first story was at my old house, which is right around here where I live now, close to St. Stanislaus Conservation Area. But there's a small patch of woods right next to the big patch of woods neighborhood surrounded by. So, I was really young, so... You know, I thought get anything well wrong in my head. That's why. <laughs> but the main point of this will stay the same. So, with these blueberry bushes behind her house near a small patch of woods across the fence. So, I was going across this fence. My my dad told me to go pick some blueberries. So, you know, gave me a bucket. Went, go get some blueberries. So, go over the fence, start walking this small patch of woods, and I'm getting this eerie feeling, and I'm like, well, I need to get me some blueberries, whatever. So, I get up to this small patch of woods, and these trees just start shaking. Like, I'm not, I'm not talking about small trees. These are probably about the size of like a, probably about the size of a telephone pole or more. But there are two trees right next to each other. And they're just violently shaking. I've never seen trees shake this hard. I was like, geez. And this growl started coming out, kind of. I might be getting that part wrong, but it made some noise. And it just shook me on the inside. And I never even cried a lot, even back when I was younger. Yeah, it, basically, it, this is the gist of what uh, Sean here is uh, telling. Um, he's had a lot of different encounters with Bigfoot where some of the times he didn't see Bigfoot but the by knowing a lot about it from watching all these shows and stuff he knows what Bigfoot does and the tree shaking is one of the things we find that he does um to scare people and things like that and uh and he's seen bits and pieces like you know when it was reaching up and grabbing apples he's you know got to see the arms and and, uh, and you know, pieces of the Bigfoot, kind of like I have. I've seen the Bigfoot from, like, the waist up one time for just, you know, not very long. He went from a tree to another tree. And then I got to see his arm when he reached in the tent, you know. so But there were Bigfoot encounters, and that's kind of what he's sharing. Just so I help clarify that. So you can go on with your stories, buddy, where people kind of understand, uh, you know, the gist of what we are trying to do here. All right, thank you. I definitely needed that. All right. Like, pretty bad. So, get up next to it. That noise breaks out. 
like something just shook me on the inside of my body. I was break down crying. And boy, I never ran this fast my whole life. I hopped that fence real quick, ran to my dad, and boy, I got inside. Mm-mm, I ain't dealing with that. Then, see, you know, that's not like a big thing or nothing. But so the next one was in Pacific, Missouri. And this time I had seen some tree structures yet again i'm not getting in i'm not getting into the juicy stuff yet but so this is in pacific missouri i'll describe what these structures look like but so we had checked out this area about a week before because it's coming up on turkey season and this is about two years back or so which is probably one of the worst turkey seasons i've ever been a part of because the weather was still like fall and the turkeys were still acting like it but so we go check out this area, check around. A couple signs, like weird things, but nothing big that I'm like, yeah, we ain't hunting here. But so next weekend, come back because we're going turkey hunting, and we're walking on this trail, and it, the trail goes into some woods. So we're going into the field of turkey hunt. But right before you enter the field, three big sticks laid against a tree, like long sticks. And in the top of them, there was like sticks shoved in between the big sticks. It looks like a one of them Indian teepees, but without the light layering over it. So we hunt there for a little bit. And then over the hill to my right, you start hearing just like walking around, like pacing. And we're sitting here like, whatever, just a person, which, looking back on it, doesn't really make a lot of sense, because, one, what kind of freaking man can make walking around noises that loud whenever he's 100 yards or more away? And we're here, like, laughing. We're sitting here, like, are you kidding me? Freaking children are out or something. So, sitting there still. Eventually, we decide, all right, we're going to get up and go. So we walk over a little bit further into the woods, and there, there's these giant logs, like really thick, real long. But the way they're placed, they're placed like on top of each other. It looks like if you if you got on top of it, and some people know this when they were young, but whenever you get up on like one of them stone paths or something, not paths, but some stone walls, on the side of like a sidewalk and you just get up on top of them and just walk them that's what it, that's what it looked like it, it looked like a path where if you got on them you'd walk and it was darting left straight right it's like a path you'd walk and it went from point a to point b it went from the one field that we were hunting into this other field on top of the uh, i don't know what the word would be well, it just went up to the top field. Oh, yeah, and by the uh, structure we saw first, there were just big old imprints on the ground. Looked like someone was just stepping around there or something. Probably would ever put it up, but. So the next one, we go to St. Saint, Saint Stanislaus Conservation Area, which is right next to where I live. And this is where it kind of gets, get, kind of gets getting a little better. So, what what state is this in? Missouri, sorry. Okay, Missouri. All right. Well, I mean, I might have to go squatching in Missouri. It <laughs> sounds like your area's got pretty good activity going on. <laughs> right, but go, one thing, one thing ahead. is, didn't, though. Didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead, man. All right, well, quick. One thing is, I've never had anything happen way down south Missouri. But, I mean, they're probably still over there. I mean, they seem to be everywhere. But, so... This is right next to my house, St. Stance Lost Conservation Area. And there's this creek, I think it's called Cowmire Creek, but it flows into the river down there. And you can walk all the way to the river. So me and my friend Joey always bow fished it. Shot. I mean, we sucked, but we'd shoot some. So we're walking down there, and eventually it gets to some parts where it gets muddy on the trail. Ugh. Where it gets muddy. There were 
these footprints, but they weren't like big footprints. They looked like an average man size footprints. But who's walking that trail barefoot? The real question. But these toes look longer. Kind of look like they had like nail marks in the ground. I'm not explaining. It looks like they were angled down. These footprints were real weird. But then if you keep walking, you get to the spot where it, the Calmar Creek enters the river. And you can get down there, and it's all soft ground. So, more of them footprints and all. But then there's just big old canine footprints. Like, they were just huge, probably about seven, eight inches, like, long. If you're looking from the toe to the heel. I don't know, dogs have heels, who knows, but. Well, well, some, That's what I'm looking at. Some, some of the dogman uh, footprints that I've seen ha- have almost like a foot with the dog print mix. And and then when you say you've seen the big footprint with the to- the nails, um, usually big footprints don't have nails except for if they're Janosqua. And, uh, the Janos- That's what I was thinking. Yeah, the Janosqua, man, they're way more dangerous than a, a regular Bigfoot. Um, typically they're the ones that had the fang, you know, the big fangs and, uh, and the claws that look like talons, uh, and the, yeah, are those, are those the type three? Uh, I don't know on the types, you know, I know that some people go by all that, but uh, I'm just saying the, the, the type that had the claws and, uh, you know, the, the feet with the, leave the claw prints and the hands that have the claws. Those are typically the Janoska that, you know, at nighttime they, a lot of times that are the ones that have the red eyes. Even though I've encountered a, a, a Bigfoot with red eyes, and they didn't have that. but um, So I don't know. I guess red eyes might not be exclusive to just that. But I, I just wanted to say that the claw thing, um, I'd be careful around where you find that. <laughs> That's for sure. And so, so continue, oh. man. I just throw in my two cents every now and then. All right, so... The canine prints had little toenails in there, too. So, whatever. <laughs> I'm Next story. I'll be, I'm, as I'm saying, these stories aren't crazy big or nothing. That, that's kind of why I wanted to come on here. Just to let everyone know, your stories don't have to be pretty big stories. If you know some weird stuff, just say something. I mean, it's not that hard. Because I know a lot of people don't want to come on and say nothing. If they haven't seen it. But. So next story. So. Whenever you get down there into the woods. If you're walking on the path. You know to go left. Down to the river. Which we always went. Or right. And the uh, creek narrows out a little bit. But. So. I look down to the right. And there's just. Big, hairy thing, probably about four feet wide, whatever it was. You can make out shoulders and kind of where the head started. Looked like it was hunched over. But it it was huge, whatever it was. And it had brown hair coming off it. And you got to remember, we live in Missouri. We don't got no grizzly bears around here. But I'm looking at it, and it's just huge. It's it's not moving a muscle. I've never noticed this before. It had a whole bunch of brown, shaggy hair off it. And it was, the hair was swaying in the breeze. And, uh, so I'm like, all right, whatever. We go fishing. We come back. I look down there. I'm getting myself in the same spot I was looking before, moving around, see if I could see it. And nothing. It was completely gone. Nothing that even looked like it. It, it wasn't leaves or nothing. Because even, even if it was, I would have been able to spot the leaves again. I just noticed it. Well, but, if you if you seen this hair and stuff, then you did see one. <laughs> you know? And then plus, where you talk about that one and where they was grabbing the apples and stuff, you seen, you know, you seen it then, too, in a way, you know. At least part of it. But I've, so, yeah. What I'm saying is, I've never seen, like, I've never seen it to where I could definitely say, well, that's a whole Sasquatch right there looking at me. <laughs> Yeah, but when you see a, a big old hairy arm sticking up, you know, I mean, what else could it be in Missouri unless a gorilla escaped from the zoo, you know? <laughs> it's like, that's oh, what, we got a missing gorilla. I, 
All That's right. what I'm saying. I've seen bits and pieces, but nothing that was definite where I'm like, well, I mean, definite to where in my mind, I obviously know what it is. But, I mean, definite to a point where if someone else saw it, they didn't know what it was, they just passed it off to someone else. Yeah. But, then the next one is still in St. Sam's Law. I'm going by a location here. And this, this is another one where I'm like, well, as I'm saying, I definitely seen one, but if it was someone else, they'd have just been like, "Oh, I'm not. That ain't no Sasquatch." But so we're driving on by down Mo Bottom Road. We're going over this bridge where the creek runs under it, and uh, so we're driving over it. I'm looking to my right. It's just fully black. Whoever it was, and I'm like it. I keep saying whatever it was. I know what it was. But it had a cone-shaped head, like they always say. And I could notice broad shoulders, arms laying. It was laying down looking into the creek. It had broad shoulders. You could see its arms going down. And you could see where its pelvis turned into its legs. And you could see where it had its toes angled towards the ground, its feet sticking up. <laughs> and I was just sitting there like, well... All right. <laughs> it ain't chasing the car, so I guess we're good. And, uh, where's the next place? Okay, so Jefferson County, Missouri. This time I'm in Festus, Missouri, which is, I think it's a city in there. But. So, this one isn't really crazy, but. So, we always go on the. So, they have. I'm not going to say two stories, but they have a basement that's, it's not underground, well, it is in the front, but if you look in the back, it's not. Then they have the top level, and because you can see, like, if you look on the bottom, it doesn't look, it would just look like a second story. So this makes it look like a second story up. And they got porch right there, so you can see, look over and see everything. So we always just go back there, spotlight deer, maybe a little bit illegal, but we ain't shooting them, so. <laughs> so we're just spotlighting. We don't see nothing. So we're trying to spotlight off, just sit there for a little bit. When we start hearing this noise, it's like, I'm not going to make the noise. It just sound, I just sound like a weirdo, but it sounds like, I can't explain it without doing it, but. It was like a, why, why? I can't make the noise. But it sounded like a woman screaming, but not really. It sounded like deep in the gut or guttural. But it sounded like a woman just like yelling, but it, was, it wasn't it was to the right where there's a house back there in the woods. It was to the left where if you look back into the woods, there's absolute nothing. And it's just making this noise, and we hear it from all the way up on the balcony. So we're just sitting there like, Oh, it's a cougar. But, so fast forward about a year or two. And, uh, so we're sitting, we're swimming in the back because they got a pool back there. And so we're swimming and we start hearing some walking the wood line. Starts from our right up and it starts coming down. And it just sounds like, well, a man walking. So we're like, what the? What's going on here? So we get out of the pool because we're freaked out. We're looking around, and when we got out of the pool and stopped making noise, it completely stopped. No movement. But whenever we just left one kid on the back porch, and me and my friend went and got the spotlight, we came back. Since no one was making noise, it started walking again. It's more walking. This time it's like down the woods and took a lift. It's still walking. By the creek now. So we got the spotlight out. We're looking. We turn it on. Move it over. All we see is just red eyes for a split second. And then it just turned. Couldn't see nothing. And complete silence for the rest of the night. Besides it walking into the woods. Now when you saw the red eyes, did it look like that it had light emanating from the eye? Well, we saw it for a split second, so I couldn't really... Still, it looked like 
Because some, some people try to say it's reflection. But when I saw the red eyes, it, it was really, really, really dark. And there was a really thick cloud cover. So there was no moonlight. And uh, I was carrying a bunch of stuff, uh, our camping equipment. Um, and I, But I knew the campsite because I'd been there camp several times. So I, I was just walking up the hill and I was dropping gear and stuff, you know. And when I looked up, um, me and my friend that was with me, I was like, dude, what is that? And, and there was eyes um, up the hill. And, and they... You know, there was nothing reflecting off of them, but they were red, and they were bright red, like they had light coming from within the eye. And that is that is something that is hard to explain or, or even comprehend, because you would think most of the time that something has a red eye like that, you would have some light reflecting off of it. But there was not, there was no light at all, um, because it was so dark, I couldn't hardly, I couldn't really hardly see nothing. Um, it, and, and, uh, I had a flashlight on my side that, you know, after I dropped the gear, I'd pull my flashlight and shine it to see if I dropped the gear in the right place. But uh, it just so happened I knew the, the area good enough to, um, go up, you know, it wasn't like, but 15 feet or so and I could drop the gear. So it was not like I was having to converse a whole trail or something, but the, the eyes looked like they had light emanating from within them. And so I was kind of wondering if you thought that might be the case with you or it was a reflection. Uh, it looked more like reflection, but at the same time we had the porch light on, like on us. Okay, well, so then you had a light source. That stopped me from seeing that. Well, it could could be a reflection if you had a light source. We didn't. So, uh, hmm. okay, you answered the question. Uh, you can continue then. So yeah, it just looks like a reflection to me. But so, all right, now we're to the freaking fast wash arm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, me and my grandpa were sitting on this. So, my aunt lives in Innsbruck. But, so we're sitting on our porch. And she has like this, I don't know, plant besides Alaskan looking. But it has dark wood. And there's like netting on there where the windows are. But it's just netting. There's no window. So me and my grandpa are sitting there talking, and he's looking at me, and I'm having my back towards the wall, so he's not looking at any woods or nothing. And I'm looking at him, which is behind him is where the screens are, so I can see through. And out of the corner of my eye, when we're talking, I just notice something, some movement. And I look over there, I just see it slowly reach up, and I could notice... It, it had black fur, and its actual skin itself was gray. And I could see the creases in its palms, like a human has. So they looked, like, deep in. Like, if you curl your hand a little bit, it makes your creases kind of coil in. We had what was going on there. And I could notice, not your elbow, but if you look at the back of it, like where you get shot. It didn't have hair right there either. It looked like tri. It, it literally looked like triangles of no hair going up from each side. So I can see that it just reached up, and I also noticed it. It had fingernails, but fingernails were really long. Kind of looked like claws, but not like a long claw. Not like a grizzly bear or something. But it looked like they were came out and they pointed, went back, but crudely pointed. It wasn't like some triangle geometry stuff. <laughs> but so it reached up, grabbed something, tore it down. And I could, I could see its whole forearm up to its bicep. And, geez, this thing was just ripped whatever it was. <laughs> I was like, God, whatever happens, I don't want to see that. <laughs> So, so, so when you say it was pointed, was it um, kind of almost like round fingernails, talon type? It was more like, so it, were, it looked like fingernails that someone had let grow for a while. <laughs> like, in, you know when you see them freak show people or whatever, and they got them real long fingernails? Yeah. 
and how they kind of point off at the end. Um, well, I can say. I guess uh, um, being pointy, so they look like they were regular fingernails, and they came to a point. That's what you're saying. Yeah, they were about three inches long, each one of them. It looked like. Dang. See, that almost sounds really Janosko to me. I don't, I'm not really sure about these Janoskos besides what I've heard on the internet, but maybe so. Yeah, I mean, Them, I, I don't know for sure, but that's what it sounds like. Right, go ahead, man. Then the next, all right, so the next story is in Bloomsdale, Missouri, in St. Genevieve County, which is where the story after this one takes place. But, so, there's this creek down there. We always fish. It's good fishing. Or, at least it usually is. This time wasn't really that good, but. So, we're fishing around, whatever. We get real far down the creek. And usually on each side, it's pretty clear. Like, you can see around. But, we have to stop. And it's like only water besides up into the thicket, and then it gets into gravel again. So, so I have to be in the creek. So I walk down on each side of me. It's thick brush. I cannot see through it at all. So I walk up. It's a good fishing hole right there. So I'm about to cast, and all I hear is just like a stomping of a foot. It sounds like on the top of the hill. And then another stomp coming down on a slope of the hill. Like, you could hear it which way it was crashing feet down. And it's not a bipedal. But on the second footstep, right before I heard the third one, there was this branch snap way up. I can't I can't exactly tell how tall it was because whoever it was is on incline. But so I heard a branch snap way up. There's a third footstep. Then I heard a fourth one on the gravel on flat like I was. But I was kind of in the creek, though. But I was still pretty flat with the gravel where it goes in the brush. But I told my gravel, all right, stop a second. And it goes completely silent. Not even a bird chirp, nothing. Which I didn't really notice earlier. Maybe it was like that the whole time. But So I started slowly backing up. And then whenever I finally decide, all right, I can turn, I can turn away from wherever this is and just walk down the creek. Whenever I make a step that makes a lot of splashing noise, you can hear another footstep going up the hill, like back up where it came from. So each time I made a loud noise, it was another footstep going up. And you could easily distinguish what was the splash and what was a crunch in the brush <laughs> going back up. So every time I did that, and eventually it got out of there, and I stopped hearing it. Then about 30 minutes earlier from this, we were fishing this one spot. We're head back, so we got to go through this spot again. Nothing going on there. It was completely fine. But so we come up near it, and there's like 12 turkey vultures. I don't know if you've ever been up close with a turkey vulture, but they're a lot bigger than they look in the sky. They're pretty intimidating. <laughs> Shoot, I don't know what I was more afraid of, whatever the thing was coming at me or the turkey vultures. But these things are just flying around. And I'm like, now what's going on over here? Then we get up. My grandpa's like, all right, let's fish this spot. I'm sitting here like, I kind of just want to leave. But it's fine. And then we get up near it. And I don't know if you ever cut a deer's guts open. But it just smelled like a deer's got ripped apart. Like fresh, like it was. It smelled so bad. I wanted to throw up. But so we're standing there. My grandpa's still fishing, and I'm like, "Can we go?" And then on my right, a rock just gets thrown through the trees and lands on the other side of the gravel. And I'm like, "Now what could do that?" Then I tell my grandpa, "We're leaving. <laughs> I ain't sitting here dealing with this." So we leave. And then the last story is last weekend. Well, today's November 4th, Sunday. So last weekend was 28th and 29th, I think. But, or no, 
I don't know if I'm getting that wrong or right, but whatever. So we're so my land, St. Genevieve County again. And I hunt there all the time. Or at least I used to. We I probably haven't been there in like a year. But I used to hunt there all the time with my dad and hunt there sometimes with my grandpa. Not a single weird thing at all. So I'm like, I, I feel safe to go there. So we go there, and on the gravel road, I'm noticing, well, apparently one thing Bigfoot do is they make these explanations of sticks and stuff, of vines, limbs, whatever they can find. So I'm noticing that, and I'm like, good Lord, please don't let that be on my property. <laughs> so we get to my property. Nothing not usual. Looks well, completely fine. So I'm like, all right. And we have this ravine down there that we always see deer cross. My friend might have seen one. So I didn't see the deer. But so we're hunting there for about an hour. I think some people can make this noise where they put their finger in their cheek and, like, pop. Some people can do it pretty loud. And it has, like, a kind of a cluck and pop kind of noise. I don't know how to explain it. But, but so we're sitting there. And that starts happening. You could hear it each time it would pop on one side of the mouth. You'd tell which side it was on. And I was thinking, I don't know, maybe it's just someone cutting lumber. And it just sounds weird over here. But it was so close to us. So we're sitting there wondering what's going on there. Eventually I decided, all right, we're going to leave. And the thing was, whenever it was popping, it wouldn't just stay in one place. That's how I knew it wasn't someone cutting lumber. So we go up to the shed that my grandpa was shot deer at. And right next to the shed was this lamp, or not lamp, but, uh, what's it called? Hold on, let me think of the name of this thing real quick. One of them light poles. It was about the thickness of that. And it, it didn't look like someone had just knocked it over. It looked like it had been twisted out of the ground and just, like, popped and just thrown down. So, I'm like, well, let's just hope. And so we hunt there for a little bit. I make a mock scrape, which is where you, well, deer will kick dirt and, like, leaves away from a tree and just leave it dirt right there. And those will, those will peer right there. And, you know, that's how they get it out. So I'll make a mock one of them, see if I can get a buck coming over, put some dope, put some dopey on there. So... I'm sitting there for a while, hunting two hours, I guess. And we leave. We go up to Magnolia Hollow, this conservation area right next to there. So we go there, eat a sandwich, and come back. And so we so we gave about two hours to rest. So we get back there, me and my grandpa and Cameron, or Cameron's my friend I was talking about in this story. But so we go check the blind. Because the last time it had spider webs and stuff in it. Right, whenever we checked it out, it looked all right. So we decided, okay, whatever. So we go to, so we decide, all right, let's go check out the scrape, see if there's any deer sign. So we're by, so we get to the shed because then we just turn right and just walk down. So we get to the shed, and this noise just starts going. It sounds like, whoa, but it goes for like a long time, like. 30 seconds or more, each noise it makes. It would go from that noise to, oh, and I start to, like, go down and pitch a little bit. So we're sitting there listening to that, and I'm trying to tell myself, okay, it's just a cow. But if it was a cow, one, I would have been hurt hearing it all hunting season because cows are annoying. All they do is just sit there and moo, make noises. And two, no one knows cows around there. And three, what would a cow be doing? Just one random cow in the middle of the woods. So, and how would it make that long of a noise? And this noise is loud. But it sounded pretty far off. So he's like, whatever. Cameron Cameron asked me, he's like, you want me to go sneakily grab that bucket? I'm like, no. (laughs) Through that bucket. We're going to the blind because we wanted to grab that to go hunt the blind. So we get to the blind. The noise had stopped now for about a minute. We get to the blind. Right before we get in, it starts making that noise again, but it's a lot closer. 
And then we have a third noise in between those two. But it just sounds like a mixture of the two. So I can't really make the noise that well. But so we're standing there. And I'm looking over. And I noticed this thing. So someone in another episode, I don't know if it was on uh, this channel, but they were talking about how they were looking at something that looked like a burnt tree. And they figured it's nothing. It's just a burnt tree. That that's exact. I thought, how would you mistake that? But so I'm looking at this thing. I'm like, well, that's just a burnt tree. So I'm noticing it narrows out at the very top of it. It's like super wide, but it's only about seven, eight foot tall or something like that. So I'm like, how would a burnt, how would a tree be this thick, yet this small? And while I'm looking at it, I'm noticing more features of it. I could notice abs, like really well built and I can know it's pick and I'm like well this is pretty odd <laughs> and it also looked like it put some like sap on it or some sap on itself or something because it had like this yellow on it but it would go in the creases of the abs and come out so that's yeah. how I knew I was looking at something weird that was on this channel it was uh the guy who um, also shared the story about playing with the little Bigfoot when he was a kid. From I think Oh, his yeah, name was yeah, Paul. that was the one. Yeah, his name was Paul. And the other encounter he had was the one, he, he, uh, the burnt tree thing that you're talking about. Yeah. But so, so I'm looking at this thing, and the more I'm looking at it, the more I'm noticing more features. And then out of nowhere, the, the noise stops again, probably for about 30 seconds. And one of them is making the noise the second time. It still sounds pretty far away. But then out of nowhere, I just hear this crack. It sounds like a big old tree, like a tree limb or something. But you know whenever you hear something rotten break and hear like the insides of it's cracking and popping? Like nasty noise in there? Yeah. Yeah, so it was making that noise. It was, it was The crack was so loud. It sounded like something just bulldozed into it or something. But... So it just sounds super loud. Then it made this noise. My friend Cameron can make it real well. But it was like, rah, rah. <laughs> I don't know how to make the noise, but it sounded just wild. And then, so we decided, all right, screw this blind. We ain't hunting. <laughs> so we're not, we're not wanting to run. Because if we run, we know the predator prey thing. You never run from a predator. Ain't exactly that smart. So we, we'd run for like a little bit. So we turn around, just stand our ground, ready to shoot wherever this thing was. So when it was coming after us, you just hear breaking through trees and stuff, and it was making this whoo whoo noise. <laughs> it sounded like something like it's super windy, and they're like whoo whoo. It kind of sounded like that a little bit, but it was more guttural, and like it was like screaming at us in a way. So yeah, I've keep, heard I've heard that screaming you're talking about, man. Uh... Down at Del Hollow, it, um, it almost sounds like a, almost like a crazy man screaming like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was, that was pretty I much I mean, no, seriously, right and then I was like, dude, what the hell was that? And, uh, and and my friend was like, oh, it must be some kind of bird. I was like, dude, there's there no bird that makes that sound. <laughs> it's a crazy man sound. But uh, yeah, you don't, you don't. but I know what you're talking you about, man. It's almost like a crazy person screaming, uh, like, um, uh, like you know, they're mad or something. I don't know, man. It's crazy sounding for sure, isn't it? Yeah, but it made that noise, but it didn't do it for that long. It was like <laughs> it made about half that. <laughs> but so it kept coming after us, and you can hear it cr crashing through trees. But not once did we hear a footstep. I mean, ever. And also, the amount of, like, uh, distance it made. So whenever it made that, whenever it was making that noise that second time I was talking about, and it stopped, it only stopped for about three seconds, probably less. And then it was right up next to us. So we're like, no man can make, like, 100 yards turn into 10. <laughs> or not, a, probably not 100 yards, but. It's pretty far away. So made that crack, and it was coming after us. We finally get up to the car. We're sitting there. We're shaking. Our adrenaline's pumping. We're feeling all sorts of different things. We're feeling scared. 
happy for some reason. And <laughs> the third one was, we got, we get shoot something. <laughs> but no, it, it, we had this feeling like if this comes out of the woods, we're going to have to shoot it. There's nothing else we could do. But the thing is, not, it never came out of the woods and we didn't see this thing once. Besides maybe what I saw in the tree, but that couldn't have been the same thing. Or the same one. So we're, so we get up there, unload, box everything up. And I get in the passenger seat, I'm explaining to my grandpa, oh, dang, I missed the whole point. But when we were down there, he was making the noise the second time, I thought, I was like, should I go get my grandpa? He'll probably know what's going on here, maybe. Or he can give us some if we're going to leave or not. But someone was telling me, like, I had a voice in my head and a gut feeling. It was like, do not go get grandpa, whatever you do. So when we got back up there, this kind of makes sense. Because, one, we had to run away from this thing. And grandpa, he's not some <laughs> athlete. And, two, he said, well, if I heard that, I would just went in there and look for it. So I'm thinking maybe that's why I was getting that feeling I should not go get gravel. So then it starts making that noise again, like it made the first and second time. But the thing is, no one except me could hear it. We all had the windows down. My grandpa's right next to me. It's coming more from the left, so he should be able to hear it. So I'm sitting there, and it's making the noise louder than it was before. But no one else could hear it at all except for me. And all, And then... When he was making that noise for last time before we left, this dude in his blue truck, my neighbor, he booked it out of there. He drove so fast down that gravel, he was spraying it up everywhere. He was like speed racer down there. I was like, well, now I wonder if this is a regular thing. Oh, no. And that's pretty much the end of that. So that's the end of your stories? I think so. Let me think real quick. I'm going to miss something. I also want to talk to you a little bit about... Yeah, you said you stuff. had some other stuff you wanted to share, that. too, that's different from that. So go ahead and share that, man, because I'm cool with all the uh, mystery stuff, you know? All right, well, this is just some other little stuff that happened. And one of them just involves... All right. Well, I don't, know, I don't know if you've had them dreams where you don't know the place, but then you end up going and seeing it. And yeah. you're like, how did I know anything about this place before? Right. Without ever seeing it before. But, so, I know, obviously from watching the show and all that, I know what a dog man is. But, so I had this dream, randomly. And it was, it was a dream that we were riding in my friend's car, or his truck, I mean. It was me and my friend Cameron, my friend Thomas, and I remember some other people too. But so we rode up on this little, I don't know what the word would be, but you know them small little concrete things where the water can run under them, but it's not like a big old bridge or nothing. There's still grass on the top, well that's what it looks like. So A culvert? Yeah, thank you. So we drive over that, and the car shuts down my dream. And I know, I don't even know this place. So in my mind, I'm thinking, well, whenever I woke up, I was thinking, oh, that's not even a real place. I guess I'm just tripping or something. <laughs> but then we all get out of the car, and this dog man just gets out from under the bridge and just walks up to us and just looks at us. <laughs> then eventually in the dream, we found, we found a way to get away. But it was real weird. So... Then, so then about a couple of days later, we, we were driving around, me and my friend Bren, or he was my friend, but I don't know what his problem is, but so we're driving around in his truck, and we come to this place, and well, lo and behold, it's that bridge, not bridge, but that old Culver or whatever, and then the woods that was in the dream, and every single thing matched to a T. Even the old house with the cornfield in the back and the fence, even that was in my dream. Like, how would I know about that? 
without ever saying it. And it all matched exactly. So I'm like, well, uh, hopefully Dog Man don't come out. Luckily it didn't. <laughs> then the next one, I seen a UFO. That was something. <laughs> what, what did you tell him to take, to take off that you didn't want to be there or what? Yeah, pretty much. Well, that <laughs> so might be why you didn't see. You might have had the, the dream as a warning to to not stay in that spot because there was a dog man in that culvert. Maybe so. Yeah, I mean, but so we, it, it, dreams mean something, man. It, even in the Bible, dude, dreams mean something. The, the, there was a lot of messages uh, sent to people in dreams. Um, you know, angels would come to people and give messages in dreams. God can give you a message in a dream, and I've had him do that to me, man. He'd tell me something in a dream, and and it uh, was information that was, you know, needed. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you had a dream and it was the exact house and a cornfield and a, a road and a culvert and all that kind of stuff, that's you can't have that be a coincidence. There's too much detail, you know. Um, so that was to avoid you having a confrontation with that dog man. In my opinion, I mean, I, that's what I think it was, dude. You, you, told, yeah, him that's what, <laughs> you told him to go on. It's like, go, go on, dude. Then you avoided having that confrontation. Because the dogman encounter is terrifying. Um, I've never had a dogman encounter, but, oh, my gosh, if I did, oh, man, I couldn't imagine how. Because Bigfoot was scary enough, but, man, dogman, man, that would be crazy yeah. <laughs> it'd be crazy and scary man you know what i'm saying so yeah we got the same mindset there <laughs> really i mean so, dog man is just scarier than than bigfoot that's a fact <laughs> all right go ahead yeah i've had dreams <laughs> i've had dreams help me out in situations like how i'm feeling all that stuff before too so next one will was in my neighborhood and me my my uh sister my sister's boyfriend walking and i woke up i mean there's a short one this one doesn't even raise any questions to be honest but so i look up to my left and it's this i mean ufo is the only way i could describe it so on the, on the bottom of it it's white you know the, like a sliver on the top of it it's red and it's just sitting there spinning so i'm looking at it and i'm like well what <laughs> Then I looked at my sister and boyfriend. I was looking at them for a second. I look back, and all you see is just a streak of red and white, and it's just gone. Well, actually, I saw it, like, zoom off a little bit, but I was just dumbstruck. <laughs> I was just looking at them like, did y'all see that or what? I don't know if they did. You know, we get a response. But I've seen two of those. I've seen one that was green, too, but I can't really remember that one. Them, them don't really stick in my head that well. I mean, they were, I never got abducted or nothing, so I wouldn't really have a reason to keep that in my mind. You know, those but, uh, th those UFO experiences are kind of strange because uh, I know someone who saw a UFO, um, and and uh, she was on a, a street that was kind of near the house that we were living in at the time, and and. Uh, she saw the UFO and it was hovering above a house. And she ended up talking to a friend later who was a couple streets away who saw the same thing. But many other people didn't see it that were in the same area. And, but but they those two saw it. And, and then, But when she was driving off, she said there was like something projected at her that kept saying, you didn't see that. You didn't see that. And she's like, yes, I did. No, and it would say to her, "You didn't see that." <laughs> so when, I don't know. I, when I you say you forgot it, too, but it wasn't really crazy. You know, when you say you forgot it, that doesn't surprise me because there seems to be some kind of attempt to make people forget. Well, I I, I can definitely keep that first one in my head very well, but the second one, no, not really. All I know is I've seen it, but I can't really... I don't really have any pictures of my memory or nothing. Right. That's what I'm I, saying. Like, I, I got like a... I got just like a little green in the sky, and that's all I got in my memory. <laughs> yeah. Well, you go on to your but, next uh, story, then. 
This is where it's about to get a little paranormal. <laughs> so, this happened when I was, like, really young, too. I've had two happen in that same house. But, so, I was really young, and it was me and my cousin. We're, we used to have this little gym bar in our basement. You know, one of them ones you flip around on, do whatever. But, we were one of them. We were playing on it. We had this piece of drywall right next to the stairs. So, we're doing something. And I, I don't know, I get a feeling just to look over. And I look over, and the only way I could describe it, well, it was a shadow. But the only way I could describe it was like, oh, it sounds dumb, but it was like a dragon. It was like slithering by, and like I could make out every part of it. It was a shadow, but there was no one else down there besides me and Jeremy. My cousin. So I'm I'm just looking at it. Nick goes on for about thirty seconds, and then gone. And boy, <laughs> I just break down and I run up the stairs, and I just sit there, cry for a little bit. I was real young, and well, that was pretty much the end of that. But the next one, these are all real. These were all when I was really young. It makes me think because they always say children. And see these type of things. But so, I was really young. And, uh, oh, I got another one too. That's like really weird. I have two more paranormal ones left, like the one I'm saying right now. And then one that's pretty odd. So, I was a kid. This is on Christmas. And so, my mom, my dad, my two sisters, we're all in the same bed, and I was super young, but so I wake up randomly, and I'm like, I'm going to just go sleep in there with them. As, as I said, I was, like, really young, but so I walk, I walk into the hallway, and I look to my right, and there's this shadow, and it just, I can't say it looks like Santa, but it was, like, a big guy, and I can see his head and stuff, and it looked like he was, like, Leaning back, laughing, like, can I explain? He has hand up, like, to his mouth. Like, you know, they do, like, comics whenever someone laughs. Or, like, uh, animations. But, uh, so I'm looking at that. So I'm thinking, since I was real young, oh, that's just Santa in my living room. So I go into my mom's room, mom, dad, and my two sisters laying there. Go to sleep, and you know, only now that I'm a lot older, can I think back on that and wonder, well, now, what was going on there? And it was making a noise, too. It wasn't just like, I couldn't just see the shadow. But, oh, God. Then my last, like, paranormal one was at my Uncle Scott's apartment a long time ago. I only ever went over there once. So we're sitting there, we're watching TV, all the lights are off, except for one shine light onto the TV and the TV. But it looked like, all I can remember is the part where I was crying just looking at these things. But it looked like tiny little creatures, but it was only the shadow of them, all of these in those shadows pretty much. And they were like sitting there dancing. But like, it was also making these like super creepy laughing noises. That wasn't coming from the TV because the volume was all the way down. They were, like, dancing. They had little hats on. And I was just sitting there crying. And I can remember one of my siblings, whoever was there, wasn't crying, too. So that's pretty weird right there. Mostly because, well, there's another person there. I don't think exactly remember that one, but it was weird. They were on top of the entertainment center. And I was like, it was odd. <laughs> Well, now thinking back on it, I'm just sitting there like, this is odd. But then, I mean, it was like terrifying. Right. Yeah, the the, uh, the supernatural stuff is a lot of times terrifying, for sure. But, uh, yeah, man, that's uh, some very interesting stuff, man. I appreciate you sharing it. I have one more weird thing. All right. Go ahead. And so... This this makes me think back to something I was watching about. 
dog man a long time ago. And they were talking about how these creatures form from sticks and stuff. And they're not like, they're physical, but they're not physical. So I was laying on my couch, and I kept looking back at the same spot because I have a window. I kept looking at the same bush, move my head, look back at the same bush, move my head, look back in the same bush. And this time, it was just an all-black figure. I could make out the ears and the two amber eyes, like, completely. Like, and this wasn't no reflection this time. This time, I could just completely see, or or not orange, but amber eyes, kind of, you know, kind of yellow. But so I'm looking at it, and it just looks... I can only make out the figure of, like, the figure of the head. It's just completely black with the ears and the amber eyes. And some just told me, all right, that's enough of this. <laughs> you need to go somewhere else. So I went to my room, laid down, waited until my sisters got home, came back out. And that stuff don't usually scare me, but, shoot, I don't got guns here no more. <laughs> But also the other weird thing was I was home alone that day. But so earlier in the day, whenever I first woke up, I thought my mom had stayed home with me because I kept hearing footsteps walking around the house. And I heard drawers and stuff opening in my kitchen, all that stuff, stuff like getting jangled around the kitchen. So eventually I'm like, all right. So I get up, open the door. After it stops for a little bit, I get up, open the door. Go out there, look around. No one's home. All the doors are still locked, like fully locked. Like even if someone had just broken my house to hit a lick or something, they couldn't lock the top lock because they'd have to get a key or something. But so I'm looking around. I'm like, is mom home? I look out the window. No car there or nothing. That's the weird thing. Like those two weird encounters were connected. Yeah, that that's uh that is strange. And and for some reason, um a lot of times the paranormal uh um stories have something to do with the kitchen and the drawers and things like that, uh that will open and close and um dishes and you know, it, I don't know why, but that seems to be one of the main things that they'll do. And I, I have no clue why they do that. So Anyway, what do you think that Bigfoot is? Oh, I'm so glad you asked that question because I was going to talk to you about it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. And well, I I, I'm I, interested I I might, to hear it. I think, also, I think I might have a mating pattern down, and I'll explain why. All right. So, personally, from my experiences, it makes me think, well... Obviously, from what it's pointing to, like, if you just look surface deep of what your encounters are, they more seem flesh and blood. Because they're obviously physical. They can do whatever. But then because of that one encounter with the whoever walking around my house and the dog-looking head went through my window, but nobody, just the head. Here's the thing, though. I don't, I don't think they're just, they're out, they can't just be like, some people just say they're ghosts or whatever, but that can't really be, because they can throw rocks, do whatever, you can see them completely, so that's what I'm not sure about. Okay, but, but, but listen here, um, I, 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 I talk about this quite regular and it seems like nobody ever understands it uh, a supernatural being can be physical you you take for instance an angel is a supernatural being isn't it yeah all right well angels can come here and mate with women they can come here and eat with a person you can entertain an angel unaware they can eat our food they can bring their own food, which is manna. Uh, one of the foods that they have, anyway, is manna. Because even Jesus said manna is bread from heaven. 
uh, um, and we can eat that food. So to think that a supernatural being is not physical is wrong. It, uh, it's physical. Uh, the Apostle Paul talked about there being different kinds of flesh, celestial and terrestrial, which means uh, you know something that is angelic or uh, from earth, but they both have flesh. And, but the glory is different, he said. And that's why a, 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 a celestial being is able to pass through a wall, but also solid enough to grab you. They have physical bodies. And they they have to eat to survive. They can't they can't go without eating. And, you know, you think that a a, a, a a celestial being doesn't have to eat. You know, that most people would think that uh, you know some kind of being that you know the celestial doesn't have to eat. They do too. That's wrong. The only beings that are 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 uh, without a body are demons, and there are they were celestial beings that were killed. And they lost their body, and they came out of their body, and they're just spirits. And they became the demons of uh, today. Uh, uh, you know, so they, they don't have a body. They, they couldn't physically do things so much. They could manipulate some in the physical realm, but um, typically they can't. They, you know, they're not, they're not physical, and they can't do too much uh, when it comes to physical reality. Um, so... When when you're when you're talking about this, it's just like I, I want you to know that that, that 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 a celestial being, that is supernatural, can be physical. So go ahead. Well, I mean that makes sense too because, well, I mean that obviously makes sense. That also has to do a lot with Bigfoot too. Now I'm thinking about it. Cause right, Bigfoot is how, physical. How is That's it? why it can leave footprints, but it still can be supernatural, you know, and go through but, a portal or whatever, you know. But that's what I'm getting to. Because they can walk around and trudge the woods without making a single, like, without being able to hear them stepping at all. But then right. other times you can hear them just walking around like it's no one's business. Yeah, crashing through, you know. They'll take off breaking limbs as they go and, you know, noisy as like heck. Like it wasn't ever coming at me. Yeah, but then they can also that, sneak up on you and you not know it. And they be, you know, two, three feet from you and you not see them. It's crazy. But that's you know? what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking. Or what I was thinking. I think maybe that is completely true. Because it seems that only whenever they really know you're there that they'll go completely silent but whenever it was just coming at me through like the real thick brush and like there was no way it could have seen me or I could have seen it it could have thought I was a deer or something so it might have been thinking whatever so just trudge to the woods like there's no one's business <laughs> like you need your footsteps and stuff so I think it, I think I don't know what they are. <laughs> it really is the hardest question. Because there's no other animal can just flip that switch like that. But I think it's more, if they know you're there, they'll go silent. And if they don't, they don't really care. That or they'll just walk around and you can hear the footsteps. If they want you to know they're there. Right. Yeah, that's that's what I think. I, I think they when they make noise, they want you to know. When they don't make noise, they don't want you to know, and uh, and it depends on what their agenda is, and and uh, you know that that seems to be the case. You know, out of all the stories I've collected, um, sometimes they sneak up on people, and they don't even know they were there, and they'll notice them. It's like, oh, there's a Bigfoot, and then there's cases where it's like they were uh, uh, tracking me. You know, on the on the side there, and every footstep I took, they were taking a step, trying to mask their footsteps. But you know, it's not really masking the footsteps because they they notice. And then you know, there'll be times that they charge them and they stop at the edge. Um, so it even that's kind of what happened to me on that last encounter. Yeah, I mean, even the fact that they stop on the edge and they didn't come out and get you tells you something. 
because the angelic creatures aren't allowed to come kill us, you know. The, the, mm -hmm. the, it's, it's, a, it's a God rule. Um, so why do people think that they would come crashing toward us and stop other than if there was some something biblical that was um, a rule that God has that they can't come kill us because they would come kill us if they were allowed to because they could easily crush us all and take over this world. As many as there Definitely. are of those in dog man, psh, man, they could send an army of dog man and Bigfoot. You know, when the Bible talks about there would be um, an army of those sent and there would be uh, Abaddon sent uh, as a general over these creatures, uh, uh, and they are sent out to kill a fifth of part of mankind. But God marks, you know, the Bible says that God marks his people so they can't kill them all. You know, so I got a siren coming by, so excuse that. I live on a busy road. <laughs> but anyway, um, it, it, it's, 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 uh, crazy that, 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 uh, that people don't consider those, those factors that, that, you know, the, the Bigfoot and the dog man, um, will one day be an army that is commanded by Abaddon and they will come out and, and who, uh, who knows what else is, what will be with them, you know, cause there's other things that are locusts and stuff that come out of the pit. That, that will kill a fifth part of mankind. And that's what the Bible says. And some people think, oh, we'll be raptured out. But we aren't raptured out. There's nothing in the Bible that you can point to to show me that we're going to be raptured out before the tribulation. We're going to go through the tribulation, but God marks us that they can't touch us. That's why they kill a fifth part of man, uh, mankind, because they're not allowed to kill some of us. And, and uh... You know, so they kill a good portion of people, a fifth part, and then, you know, God puts into it that lest all flesh be killed is what the scripture says. I mean, read the Bible. That's why I look at the scripture for knowledge to understand the whole deal. Uh, um, you know, I want to know what the facts are, are going to be. And to me, the scriptures are facts. Uh, our opinions are just guesses, and 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 I'm guessing at what the, you know those creatures might be that do this. But the Bible does say that there are creatures that will do this. So, anywho, <laughs> what do you I have think? a question. Go ahead. Did you ever watch that video that was made by uh the Vault of Nightmares and they had uh. West from Sasquatch Chronicles on there. No. And they were talking about, they were talking about this lady that worked for the government or the military wanted to. And they had, well, they had Bigfoot car carcasses, she was saying. And that they were doing all types of and all that stuff. And, they, and like, she said that their hearts aren't where our hearts are. They're not in the middle of her chest. They're actually, like, under the Bigfoot armpit. And they're in a completely different location. And that's why whenever you just, whenever people say they shoot on the chest, right. for one, apparently the chest plate's super thick, so we wouldn't do nothing. But also, their vitals aren't in that one location. So, that's a pretty weird thing. But I don't, I don't know what to feel or what these animals are. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've heard I've heard some of that. And, and uh, you know, shoot a big foot in the head, it's going, going down. Oh yeah, definitely. Because you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, I know of other stories where someone uh, was in their house and they w had fortified their house up because they was having these Bigfoot, you know, coming and attacking their house and stuff. And uh, they had like a uh, little portal in their doorway they could open up, and they opened up the portal, and there's a Bigfoot standing there, but facing the other way, and he shot it with a forty-five in the back of the head, and it dropped dead right there. Um, and, and, you know, and there's other cases too, where people killed them. Um, I, I also had, um, a family that had, 
a bunch of journals that were going back to the 1800s um, of where several generations of the family were talking about Bigfoot encounters uh, and activity of these squatches that were on their property. And uh, he, he promised to give me this stuff, and then all of a sudden he disappeared. And I don't know what happened to him or what the deal was with that, but uh, there was a lot of things like that. And uh, and one one of the family members poured gasoline on one of the Bigfoot and set it on fire. I mean, it was a bunch of crazy stuff, man. Uh, and, and, uh, <laughs> seriously, and and and, and then uh, one, it was like they disappeared, and I, I couldn't get a hold of them anymore. And, and there was a few times like that where um, I ended up getting calls from numbers that would be like two 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 two. And there'd be like uh, some agency that would call me and tell me to back off. Yeah. <laughs> mm, well, that ain't good. No, nah, not good. And it, it would scare me too because then I would end up having these helicopters and stuff flying over my house, circling. And uh, you know, so I was like, man, I better back off that. <laughs> you know, when they start doing that, I, I'm, you know, it's not worth it to me. You know. I'm I'm not gonna definitely be, not. I'm not gonna try to be the brave guy. Yeah, I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> it's like, nah. When you have that kind of thing happen, it's just you better shut your mouth and and uh, move on because uh, um, you ain't gonna win that battle. You know what I'm saying? For real. Yeah. <laughs> so and, anyway, to let people know, I mean, just you know, there's there's a lot of things like that I've had to deal with, and uh, you know, so. Go support the show. <laughs> There's a good reason why you ought to support me. Dang it. <laughs> you know, I've had to deal with some crazy things over the days, you know. But uh, anywho, man, you go ahead, brother. Uh, say what you want to say. Okay, so what I, what I asked you on email, do you think Bigfoot migrates at all? Like moves around location to location due to like springtime or summertime or winter and all that i think they have much like a gorilla would have um they have a a fairly uh not a very long distant migration but they probably have a track that you know is i don't know how many acres that might be but they're not going to deplete all the resources in one little section like a uh you know, a 10 acre plot. They're, they're going to have a 10 acre plot. They are, are in, and then they're going to make a loop, which might include maybe a hundred acres or something, um, that they do a rotation on like, like gorillas do. Gorillas do the same thing. They say in the same area, the same area, but they make a loop through it. And, uh, so that they're letting the resources replenish and, uh, um, you know, they can get what they want and then move on a little bit further through their little loop that they make and take some resources and then move on a little further, take some more resources. And it lets, lets the uh, enough time for the resources to replenish themselves. So... They don't migrate from like Canada to Florida or Canada to Kentucky. Even um, <laughs> their 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 migration would be in a an area that would be big enough to support their tribe. You, you understand what I'm yeah, saying? The, yeah, because what I was wondering. So there used to be this show. I don't, I don't remember what the name was, but it was usually Dogman they were talking about. But they, the dogmen would move into the area in the fall. And they even say that in Louisiana, that they move in the fall. Like some people say they migrate around. Like certain times of the year, they move in, then they move out. Which might be what you're talking about, too. Like that might just be a small circle. But they were talking about that. And I was just wondering if maybe Bigfoot does that, because I had never seen any sign near my property or on my property ever at all up until last yeah, week. Dogman, dogman, I think, more are roaming. 
um, I, I think they roam through whatever. You know, they're they're just opportunists. Um, I, I don't think yeah. that they stay in like one certain area. They there, there might be some areas they do, like down in Louisiana. I think that there are some uh, areas that they stay, but there's plentiful of resources that they can, uh, you know, they can snag alligators all day long, things like that. Um, but <laughs> it, for the most part, um, in like a place like Kentucky here, um, they're going to have a very wide through. You know, like you take maybe ten Bigfoot tribes, they might roam through all those ten, make a circuit through those. You know what I'm saying? And they're gonna try yeah. to squander and, and uh, take up whatever resources they can get um, um, throughout those ten territories. But they're not they're not gonna wander whole, through the whole country. They're going to want to know, I mean, you, you want to know the areas that you go to so that you can be effective in your own hunting and, and things like that. Because uh, a dog man yeah. can surely catch a deer. But if you're wandering forever through areas that you never know, you're not going to know where deer are. You're not going to, because these Bigfoot, they know. I mean, they, you know, every deer trail, they probably know every deer trail. They, you know, uh, uh, and and probably even like in, at, down at Dale Hollow, um, I think they even know every deer. They manage the deer herd like it was cattle, because um, because they had deer on the islands. There was like a series of five islands, and you could walk between these islands through the water. It was only like three deep, uh, three foot deep between the islands. But on the last two islands, I noticed that there was deer populations, and and because uh, I saw them, you know, I saw them walking between, you know, through the water to each island. There was grazing and stuff like that, and I was thinking, well, these Bigfoot are herding these deer down to these last few islands, and then they're managing those herds for food source, and then they're they're getting other things for food. You know, so that they aren't depending only on deer meat; they're eating other stuff. But when they want to go uh, take a deer, they go take a deer, but they have a breeding population that keeps them supplied. You know, they're not stupid. I'm telling yeah. you, these things are, would do like we do with cattle. We wouldn't eat all our cattle. We would eat some cattle, but we have a breeding population that keeps the cattle population up. That's what they're doing. I'm telling you, that's what I saw there uh, uh, where I was at. It looked to me that they had a population of deer, just like we would manage cattle. Interesting. Yeah, but here, here here's the other thing I was wondering why they moved around. So, I was thinking about it, and whenever you see them videos of Bigfoot with their babies and stuff, it's and they look really young. It's always in the spring and summertime, it seems, where them videos are coming out. And whenever you see them videos and it's like in the wintertime, the babies usually seem larger. So I was thinking that maybe they mate in the wintertime or fall. And that's where all them structures come in to show that there's a bit further. And then, well, you know, they move around and they make the structures. That way they can attract and mate and maybe make them noises like I was talking about. Or maybe they'll try and run you off the where you're at because they're trying to mate. So it makes them more aggressive and all that stuff. And then they have their babies and nurse them through. And then there's this video. And then I think they uh, also don't just carry them all the time. Well, that's pretty obvious. But I think whenever they get older, they usually place them someplace. Because some person was talking about on the Bob Gimlin video. I think it was Bob Gimlin. But that's with the Patty video. Some Indian was talking about how the only reason that Bigfoot came out was to try and get them away from the babies. And Bob Gimlin also noticed a lot of rustling in the brush. They were talking about how if you talk to him in real life, he pulled out a gun and the only reason he did that was whoever was rushing on the brush. So that's why I was wondering that, because that was the next, that was that fall. So I was wondering if she just had some older ones 
from the fall before the fall before that. Well, Whatever yeah, that, later, so. that Bob Gimlin guy you're talking about, it's not the Bob Gimlin that was with the Patterson-Gimlin footage. Oh, well, that's what I mean. I'm not talking about Bob Gimlin. I, was, I couldn't think right, of his name. Yeah, I just me make sure you know that. he That guy is more connected with the Utah Bigfoot guy, and, and uh, they seem not to be too friendly. I, I reached out to them a couple times, and uh, they <laughs> dissed yeah, Patterson, me. It's like, yeah, well, screw you all guys if you don't contact you know, you don't uh, uh, um, respond to me. I mean, you know, I'm I'm not done anything to you. So, I mean, I, I'm not even cool with them guys at all. But yeah, Pat, Patterson Gimlin was who I meant. Because yeah. I was talking about that video. Right. Of Fatty. So, I don't know. What do you think about that? Because that's just something I was kind of noticing whenever I'd watch some videos. And then... It would make sense for him to be older, rustling in the brush, and then the older Bigfoot trying to get Patterson Gimlin and the other guy away from the babies. Right, yeah. Yeah, I think during the footage that they had, um, the the female was walking away to lead them away. I know, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. To lead them away from the yeah. babies. I think you're right. But then I, they, I, I do. I, because it didn't try to go hide real quick. It let itself be seen, and it was walking, and then it turned, and it walked, you know, kind of away to lead them off track, because I think there was something else than the area that they, that that, that uh, female was wanting to lead them away from. All right, well, I got one last thing, and we'll, I'm kind of speculating on this one. I just want to hear what you think. So, have you noticed that recently... There's just been a spike of commercials trying to humanize Bigfoot. Like when it comes to Jack Wings, that uh, underwear company, and a bunch of others, like radio and stuff. They're always trying to make Bigfoot seem like something that's not dangerous and more human. I was thinking, I'm like, what if that is for the government to try and that way, if, if they release the knowledge that Bigfoot is real, the outdoor industry wouldn't take as big of a hit because Bigfoot is being humanized and more friendly than they really are. Yeah, yes, I've, I've noticed that too. Um, I don't know if that, the, you know, there's a government behind that, but, um, but yeah, that does humanize Bigfoot and, uh, um, and that could be dangerous because, I think there are some Bigfoot that, that do, when they see, you know, when, when a person comes around, they, they pretty much run. But there's also types of Bigfoot, like the Janosqua and Jugway and, you know, those those other types that, uh, like, have the claws and stuff like that, that um, I think are responsible for missing people. And, uh, and, and, you know, in the national parks, we have a lot of missing people. Uh, uh, you know, when you listen to... Uh, um, some of the missing persons uh, uh, videos that are from that uh, one fella. Um, I can't remember his name right now, but um, you know the missing people in national parks. There, there are a phenomenal amount of people every year that come up missing that have no natural explanation. It's not like they come up missing and dogs can track them. Because if it's like if someone who wandered off trail, dogs can track them. You know, you, you can find those people. Dogs can track them. But if they are not trackable, that means that they were picked up and carried off. You yeah, know? I've heard a lot of stories about the dogs just not wanting to track them either. Yeah, yeah, and then dog, dogs like stop. Scared. You know, they'll track and then they're like, and they, you know, and they not want to track no more. You know, there, so mm -hmm. there's a lot of cases of people that come up missing that are um, probably uh, squatch related, you know, from the Janosqua or the Jugway or the, um, you know, the, the other types of Bigfoot that, that, uh, um, uh, that, that, the Wendigo, you know, kind of stuff and that kind of thing that, that, mm -hmm. uh, that, that, you know, basically are, uh, very dangerous and, and, um, seem similar to Bigfoot, but they're not. And, uh, 
you know. So to me, I think it's something that, that people need to be aware of. That there's things out there that can possibly, most likely not, you can go camping most of the time and not have a problem, but there are cases where people come up missing. And that's just a fact. Period. Yeah, I heard. I heard also that Yosemite means something in another language, or like to the Indian tribe, it meant something different. It was like Yos- Yosemite meant like killer of people or something weird, which is kind of really weird considering all the missing people that go on there. Huh. I, I don't remember. I don't remember what was really, but well, I don't like remember. I have to look that up. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's a big, big place. You know, Yosemite is, and uh, you know, also a big big huge uh volcano um that's under yosemite you know, you know you've got those geysers and stuff like that and uh I, I've, I've seen videos about you know russia dropping a super nuke on uh, yosemite it would destroy the united states uh which that's kind of scary sounding you know i was like hopefully they wouldn't do that because the united states would destroy russia if they did that because we got enough nuclear subs in the ocean already to where if they even destroy if they destroyed this country, you know, we would still, you know, it'd be over for them, too, you know. So uh, yeah, it, it's a good thing that we have nukes, you know, and, and they're traveling around in the ocean and nuclear submarines, uh, because uh, that way nobody can threaten us like that, because that's that's not a good thing at all. But uh, in any way, uh, yeah, Yosemite. Uh, I would love to go there and check it out, man. I've never been there. <laughs> there you go, squashing in Yosemite. <laughs> yeah, you know it'd be cool, though, man. It's like, dude, Yosemite's an awesome place. <laughs> All I gotta say is I definitely bring some people with me. <laughs> yeah. Definitely yeah. would never go alone. I, don't go, I wouldn't go squashing alone. Now, look, man, ever since I had that one grab me in my tent, dude, I would not go camping alone, squatching alone, no nothing. I was see, I was sleeping. I wasn't even alone, but I was alone in my tent. There was a tent next to me where my buddy and his girlfriend were, and I was in my own tent alone. And the, the thing, you know, messed with me, you know, it was reaching and grabbing me and stuff, and heck with fire, man. You know, that's not cool. Uh, so I, I would be scared to camp back, uh, camp there. Um, so next time I go there, I think I'll take cameras and set them up, <laughs> you know, a bunch of infrared stuff, you know, where they, they say they don't go around the infrared. It's like, yeah, don't go around that tent there. It's got infrared spraying all over it. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, I, I don't want them coming up to my tent at all. Definitely not. Oh, uh, not and cool. And Joe Rogan. <laughs> you know who Joe Rogan is? Yeah, yeah. So, well, he doesn't believe in Bigfoot, but he said something that kind of made me I thought he did. I thought he did, man. He interviews uh, uh, the Survivor dude all the time about it. I don't know. Well, recently he said he didn't. He said he used to, but... Whatever. Well, he said... Well, he, he worked with this one monkey, and he was talking about how... It was so small, but that its muscles are like corded steel. Like, they're so dense. Like, if you pressed on a human muscle, it'd be, like, squishy. Even if they were ripped, it'd still be squishy. Yeah. But he said that it's, tr- it's like corded steel, and they're extremely strong, even the tiny ones. Yeah, they are. A, a, mon- it- a, a, a monkey is, like, ten times stronger than a human. So you can imagine what it's- Bigfoot would be. You know, exactly. That's why they can break a ten-inch tree, and I seen them do it, dude. I, I watched them. They broke over like three big trees. I mean, they weren't little trees. They're like pow, and you hear them. You know, as they're <laughs> popping and falling, and you know, you know that sound when, when a, a big limb breaks, and it's not like a little limb, like. You know, it, it was like a limb. Yeah. It was like a big thing breaking. A <laughs> you know, <laughs> and uh, it, it, you know, it was like the next time I went back there, I, I ended up making a video on it. Uh, 
and I, I, I showed where they had all those tree, uh, like the uh, main sections of the tree laid end to end, all the way across the hillside. They, they had them laid end Dang. to end. That, that didn't just fall there. It was like big yeah, that's right. 10, 15 foot logs laid down on the yeah. hill and another 10 or 15 foot log laid down right on the end of the other one and another one laid down right on the end of that other one and another 10 or 15 foot laid on that and it's like 15 or 20 of them laid down end to end that's not a coincidence kinda, you know that yeah, that was like that second it, structure i found we saw them logs laid up with each other like it was like a path if you walked it Right. We walked on this log. It was yeah. literally a path from the bottom field up to the second field up there. Almost like so they don't put prints on the ground. Right. It's yeah. Weird. S- some kind of purpose like that. Yeah. And it's hard to know exactly what the purpose is, but uh, yeah, I noticed there was something going on there. With it was almost like a fence being built, and then I seen these big arches and stuff like that. And I ended up going back down to my tent, you know, sleeping that night. And that's when they came down to me and was reaching in, grabbing me, grabbing me through the tent first. And then it was reaching in my tent and grabbing me um, to let me know. It's like, well, you come up and mess around in my territory, I'll come down there and mess with you. <laughs> it's like, dude, I didn't come up there and grab you, you know. It's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't come up in your territory and look at the limbs and stuff you had piled up, uh, and, and, you know, and, and, and limb tree structures, and, and I didn't grab you and your kids. They came down and grabbed me, you know, messing with me physically. And, uh, yeah, that, that's that's some messed up stuff for sure. But, yeah, that's all I really got to say. Besides, if, if you don't think there's enough video evidence or nothing, uh, people who are watching this should definitely go check out NVTV. They have just a whole bunch of fast watch video on there. I don't know if you knew about that uh, YouTube channel, Brenton, but... Yeah, they used to steal some of my stuff. I had to uh, do copyright <laughs> content on them. Yeah, they used to have some of my videos playing on their channel. They steal stuff from people. and uh, Yeah, but the, There's the never none understand. of anything they created, so... In a way, I kind of don't dig those guys because it, they take stuff from other channels. Of course, they In have some cool that. stuff. They have some cool stuff. I'm not going to say they don't. But they were stealing I mean, my videos, <laughs> and, and it wasn't cool with me. It's like, no, nah, uh-uh. So I, I did copyright claims on them, and, uh, and I won it. And so they, they stopped sharing my stuff. If you see anything of mine on their channel, let me know. <laughs> I, I will. But what I'm saying is, uh, not not like the talking stuff. Yeah, that 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 shouldn't be stolen. You could easily just shout out the YouTube channel and have them go to you and listen to it. Yeah, they could make a video but and say, I, "Hey, look, I want you to go watch this channel, uh, the show, and get, here's the link in the description." If they wanted to, you know, the, and if they they would still get the views. People would click on it if they gave the title, uh, you know, such and such, Bigfoot, blah blah, and then say, uh. You know, in the video, you could say, okay, there, there's a video about this that I, you know, saw, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, here's a, uh, a link in the description for that video. You know, I don't know. But stealing my stuff is not cool because I work hard to make my own videos. And I, oh, I don't yeah. want like, somebody at least, else showing at least give the At least give the people a shout-out. But the, the one thing I like is when they take the actual Sasquatch video, and I like this podcast not podcast but like talking stuff these interviews but whenever they get the actual real footage because what they're doing is they're getting that out there to show people yeah but, at the same but time, that's also on, on another channel. YouTube channel shout out the youtube channel yeah yeah that's all that's on another Definitely channel it's it. not like they're sharing it someone else is sharing it but they're they're sharing that guy stuff and, yeah uh, that's what i was saying to me, they, that's they should not, at least that's give a not shout okay. out or something yeah, like give the people their credit. Or, yeah. or just well, make a video. They should make their the- own damn content, man. I mean, why? Why are you <laughs> gonna? Why are you gonna uh, make a channel that has other people's content? Makes your channel awesome. 
you know, screw that. <laughs> you know, go get your own content. If you're so awesome in all this stuff, uh, you know, go find your own videos. Yes, <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I mean, you you'd feel that way if you were a a, a person who does does the YouTube thing for a living. Yeah, you know, um, people stealing your content is not cool. Definitely yeah. not. Yeah. All right. Well, anywho, uh, are you? Uh, is that the uh, last of the stories you have, bro? I hope so. <laughs> All right, Can't man. Think of well, else right I appreciate now. you sharing, man. You've had a lot of really cool stuff, man, for sure. Yeah, it was nice talking to you. Well, thank you, and hold on the line while I sign off here. Everybody out there in YouTube right. land, thank you for uh, tuning in and listening. Uh, um, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, um, if you want to con contribute, uh, go to, to the link in the description, PayPal me, or Patreon. Uh, if you want to share a story, go to brentonsawn at gmail.com and uh, share your story there. And, and uh, it would... Even if someone has already sent in a story, um, go email me again to move your story to the top um, because I, I, I'm ready to start cranking out more uh, stories, uh, maybe even daily if I can, you know, uh, if I can line that up. So uh, email me again if you get, if you already uh, emailed me before. And uh, God bless you, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.